All right, we're going to say shalom to everyone. Uh, thank the Most High for another day, for this Shabbat. Uh, thank the Most High for His Son, Yeshua, which is in the Hebrew. Some people call him Jesus, but his name in the Hebrew is Yeshua. And the Holy Spirit in the Hebrew, which is the Rawak. Now, today's lesson is pretty simple when you understand. But to those who, whose conscience has been seared with an iron, with deception, this will be hard for you to digest. Not to say that you're not going to be able to understand the information at hand, but the information I'm about to present will not make sense to you. All right? Does God love everyone? That's the title of this. I thought I covered this a while back. I'm not sure. I have a few videos that I can't really remember. Sometimes I probably covered it, a few topics, you know, before, you know, and, you know, I just revise them. But I don't particularly remember if I uh, covered this topic. Does God love everyone? All right. So I'm going to get into that. And I'm going to say it now and I'm going to prove through scripture that he don't okay God which is in the Hebrew Ahaya I am that I am the almighty creator does not love everyone now the first well I'm just going to go through my experience on this particular title my first initial thoughts were was well what in the world that God created everybody for, if you don't love everyone. Then, when you start reading through scripture, you'll find out that the other nations and those that do not want to believe in the Most High are actually created as a negative pulse. As you would say, a battery have two terminals positive and negative without those two coming together to create energy there's no movement so that is the same in with people people have a negative spirit they are not of the most high he created them for a purpose some people you talk to will never come into the understanding and don't want to see a bible even black people whoever it don't matter so based on this information there's no other conclusion to come to as God does not love everyone. And I'm going to show you why. And another thing I want to bring out too, because you know that the English language is a bastard's language, but it is very coded. Okay. Can the most high hate? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to prove all of this in a few minutes. All right. Now, when you look at the word, excuse me here, when you look at the word hate, it's, it can be scrambled, okay, to heat. And I'll show you what I mean. And then when you look at the word hated, and I'll, I'll I'm, of course, I'm going to go through the reason why I'm showing you this. The word hated can be scramble to the word death okay and I'll show you so I like to show out terms sometimes first so you know the path of how this lesson is going to go now I even showed you I even made a little nice little diagram to show you you see the word heat then you got the word hate then you got the word hated and then you got the word death because all these words lead to death now you would say well, what that why would the most high hate you is he leading himself to death and he did because he hated you because of your sins so he brought his son to death it's just that simple so if he hates you to the point where he don't like you because you got a lot of evil that you're doing and a lot of sins things of that nature then the thing the only thing he the way he can save you through your ignorance is through bringing his son 
to take the sting out of death. That's why you got the word eat there. He just ate death up, swallowed it, and wasn't nothing else that Satan could use against you. Okay? Now, I hope the, that makes sense. I'm going to show it again. Heat. I want this to be very clear. Hate. Hated. And once you are hated, those that the Most High hated, he killed. He destroyed them. But in that time frame, there were some in between generations, you would say, were of the Most High. Because he sprung up seeds out of the ones that he hated, which is his own people. And the other nations as well are included, so I always want to make that clear. But based on this, he died on a cross. The Most High brought his son here to die on a cross for our sins. So he had to go through death, okay? So I just wanted to make sure that we understand the two understandings of that. All right? Now, the reason why I showed that is because when you go to the Hebrew word 2534 for heat, which is nothing but the word scrambled hate, is kemma, okay? Kemma. C-H-E-M-A-H. Kemma. 20. 534. And as you see, displeasure. And that's why I highlighted that word. I wanted to be very clear what we're talking about in this particular lesson. And it has the word anger there. Poison. Rage. Indignation. Wrath. Now who's going to bring wrath? Right? Let's go to Psalms chapter 104, verse 40. Now this is all can can God does does God love everyone? No. Psalms 106 verse 40 and it says Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people The wrath of the Lord kindled against his people So we see that there's going to be some type of heat You, you ever notice that term that they use Oh I'm going to bring the heat to him Which is talking about some punishment Right Kindled against his people in so as much that he abhorred his own inheritance. Look up the word abhor. It links to the word hate. So hate leads you to heat. If some, if the Most High hates you, there's going to be some heat. And if he's hated you. Which means you didn't have a chance. That's past tense. Death. But there's two folds understanding to this death. Because he understood that all of us will eventually die if we don't come into the understanding of Christ. So that's why he allowed his son to be crucified. Okay? So I want to make that very clear. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people in so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. He hated his own inheritance. King God... Does God love everybody? No. He, the first people he hated first wasn't no Egyptians, wasn't no Edom, the, the Europeans and all. No, he hated his own people first. So when people come against the other nations, especially our people, don't understand that the Most High hated his own inheritance because we were given the oracles of the Most High and we broke the laws. And we're still doing it today under Easter, a star, dealing with all the different ideologies and things of that nature of this world and this the western world and all the other babylonian customs that they deal with today he still hate you but there's going to be a, an uprise of those that's going to be as it says in ezekiel 37 the valley of the dry bones they're going to be a minute few that's going to wake up and talk against it okay let's go to daniel chapter 9 verse 4 daniel chapter 9 verse 4 and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, dreadful, wrath. We just read it. He's he going to bring that fire to you, right? Dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So the, only, the Most High only love those who love him. If you're doing whatever you do want to do and you just think you can do whatever you want to do, the Most High ain't dealing with you. 
He may allow you. Of course, there's grace involved. But if you don't come away from that, you're going to die and, and go where the place that I really don't like to talk about because people get, oh, you shouldn't talk about hell and, and you know, fire. But that's where you're going if you don't change. OK, let's go to Proverbs 8, verse 17. The title of this, does God love everyone? We're going to find out. Proverbs 8, verse 17. I love them that love me. Sounds like a relationship, right? Can let, let me just ask you this, just based on just regular understanding, regular, regular common knowledge, right? If you're in a relationship with somebody and that person cheat on you constantly, over and over, do you love that person? No, because there's no connection. You think you may, you may be emotionally attached to that person. But your spirit don't love that person because it's tearing you up. Don't you know what stress the body is the spirit that's stressing out what's wrong and it reacts within the body? So I don't care how much you say you love a person. If they're stressing you out, then you don't love them. You're emotionally attached to that person. That's all it is. There's no spiritual connection. Love is a spiritual connection. And the physical can follow thereafter. OK, that's what a lot of people don't know. So that's why I wanted to go through this particular lesson. And it's very important that we know, that we actually know this. I love them. Love is an action, not an emotion. If you look up the word love in the dictionary right now, there is, of course, there is secular definition. But you're going to notice that it says the primitive root is a verb, which means there's an action involved. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. You know where it says, seek me early? Which means once you come into the understanding of the scriptures and you want to change, basically, when you want to change your life, the first thing you're going to seek is the commandments of the Most High. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 21. This is easy to understand, but some people probably don't know how exact that you can find does God love everyone? No, he don't. He don't love everyone. It's in scripture. I'm going to read Proverbs 8 verse 17 again. I love them that love me. It's just that simple. And those that seek me early shall find me. You see where it says seek? Because there's it's, it's actually a part of your brain that's been cut off after the fall of man. So that's why people get confused. That's why people do whatever they want. That's why people are like, is there a God? Because you're not really seeking to find out because you're not trying to connect with the creator again, but you're trying to do it based on your feelings and, your, and, and emotions. It is, and, it, and it would never work. It would never work. All it's going to lead you to is chaos. I'm going to go back to John 14, verse 21. He that hath my commandments. You see where it says, he that hath my commandments. And I'm going to just break it down for those who don't understand the old Quakers English. He that have my commandments and keep them and keepeth them. So that means you're going to keep something. He, there's a gift involved, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says he's going to put his laws back in your mind in Hebrews. So that's what he's talking about. The law is actually the commandments. The Holy Spirit will lead you back to that. Right. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He is that loveth me. So when you keep the, the commandments of the Most High, you love the Most High. That's what, it's, it's very simple. And he that loveth me shall be love of my Father. So you have to receive Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through his Son. The bloodshed. Take up your cross. So you're going to have to do the same thing. It may not be physically. To some it is. Okay? But this is, this is a spiritual act. There's things that you just can't do. There's things that you just won't want to do. But you know you'll be defiling your temple. Okay? Me shall love me of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He says manifest. You know what that means? You're going to eventually know the most high based on the way your actions are because you're going to follow Christ's footsteps. Okay? Let me get that real quick. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's go to 2 Peter. 
Very simple, right? It's not hard to understand, is it? Shouldn't be. Give me a minute. All the stuff wants to shut down. Give me a minute here. Just adding this to my repertoire of scriptures. Uh, let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. So he's left us an, an example that ye should follow his steps. You see, I mean, it's very simple. Follow his steps. The Most High is not the author of confusion. If you don't see Christ putting up Easter eggs and all that mess and searching around for some eggs in the haystack and some grass somewhere, then you must know that you're following Satan. It's just that simple. His disciples never did nothing like this. What does an Easter bunny got to do with? Think about it. What does an Easter bunny got to do with the resurrection of Christ? Not a darn thing. But I'm not going to even turn it into that. That's common sense. Now, I'm going to get into this real lesson here because if anybody is still following that, then that's on them. OK, they need to do their own. They need to do research on that. OK, let's go to um, let's go to John chapter 17, verse 23. OK. Very important lesson here. Does God love everyone? And he don't. We're going to find out. There's more information. If you don't understand thus far, I'm going to read Proverbs 8, verse 17 again. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Then, verse John 14, verse 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is, excuse me, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. You see that? It's very simple. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my father. You know why? Because you're going to keep the commandments. So you love the most high because you're keeping his commandments. That's the only way you can show the most high you love him. There's no other way. And he did it that way on purpose. Because anybody can talk like they love the most high. You see? Anybody can say that. Oh, I got a car. God, I, I prayed and I got a car. But do you keep the commandments? And there's scripture on that. He'll give you certain things, your little toys here, hoping that you will come to repent. All right? I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Let's go to John chapter 17, verse 23. I and them, the, the most high son, through his example, will be in you. Listen to this. And thou in me, which means there's a connection. You and the most high is one. That they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me. And has loved them as thou has loved me. So I wanted to pull the scriptures because you notice that there's a comparison between you and the Most High. There shouldn't be a difference <laughs> based on his son's example. If you do exactly what Christ did, that means you are the son or daughter of the Most High. It's just that simple. Okay? Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 23. John 14, 23 says, Yeshua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. If, which means, look at these fruits, he will keep his words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So which means, make our abode means we will abide with the Most High. Now, we see the question at hand because there was a question involved in saying that, you know, what does it matter if you are a Jew? Uh, God love everybody. Nah, he don't. OK, so I guess God loved the fact that some goofball are sending drones all over the place and giving people heart attacks, too. Huh. So God loved that. No, he don't love that person if they continue in that evil fleshly desire. They better come away from that. But at the end, the results for that person, you'll know if God love them or not. If they come away from it, then the Most High was dealing with them. If not, they die in their sins. The Most High never had his his love on that person, period. I don't care what nobody say. That's I'm going to read it again. I'm going to keep going back to this scripture. Proverbs 8, verse 17. Now, please, someone try to refute this. I love them that love me. Okay. 
And those that seek me early shall find me, period. So all that mess about God love everybody, no. They don't know what they're talking about. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23. Leviticus 20, verse 23. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation. So this is the reason why a specific people that the Most High chose today are scattered throughout the four corners of the, of the earth and don't know what the heck is going on. But it's a few of us that's waking up. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations, which I cast out before you. So he cast us in the midst of all these other nations. That's why we think we Negro. That's why we think we Jamaican. That's why we think we Haitian. That's why we think we Mexican. That's why we think we Native American and all these other names that they gave us. Did you give yourself that name or did the European? You see what I'm saying? Think about it. Your, even your name itself is nothing but government property. Melvin Birch. What is a birch? They name me after a tree? Are you serious? A tree, which means I link into the birch uh, company that was dealing with slavery and my foreparents was cutting down trees for that slave owner. Can we get the big picture here? A tree, mind you. Come on now. And it's all in caps. When you get government mail, you get it. It's all in caps. You can't refute that. So it is very easy to understand when it says, and you shall not walk in the manners of the nation. Don't walk. What do we now today? Yeah. We're gonna this is gonna be knuckleheads tomorrow dealing with Easter. Following the other nations, not knowing that the, that links to goddess a star, the queen mother of heaven or whatever, under Semiramis, aka Nimrod's mother slash wife. Then it links to Ishtar in different uh, ethnicities of people. Nah, but they're not going to understand that because it says very clearly, and ye shall not walk, which means don't follow their footsteps, but follow Christ, as we just read in First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations, which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhor them. He hate them. You know why? Because they're not following the commandments that were given to the people that start following after the other nations. You, I hope it's kicking in. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 26, verse 30. And I will destroy your high places. And cut down your images and cast your carcasses, which means a dead body, upon the carcass of your idol. So that means the Most High is going to throw your dead body against those idols that you're worshiping. And my soul shall abhor you. That means hate. So when you look at the word hated, it links to death. Because he did hate you. But of course, there's going to be a remnant that will make it through. So that's why he sent death to his son to die and rise again that's the true passover if you, or the truth it's not easter <laughs> I'm, i didn't even want to turn it into that type of lesson but it links in for some reason which is the most high of doing now let's go to psalms chapter 5 verse 6 psalms 5 and 6 thou shalt not destroy excuse me thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing the lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, which means they're going to speak to you in a manner that is just, you know, uh, an evil, in, in, in an evil manner. The Lord will hate the bloody and deceitful man. So the Most High himself can hate. So how can people say, well, God love everybody? No, he hate the bloody and deceitful man. The Most High don't love everybody. Psalms chapter 10, verse 3. For the wicked boasteth of his heart desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord hateth or abhorreth. Very, very simple. I, should I have to break that down? No. Nope. Let's go to Lamentations chapter 2, verse 7. Lamentations. 2 verse 7. The Lord hath cast off his altar. He hath abhorred his sanctuary, even his own place where he used to dwell. Which is his people that dwelled in the land. But he hated now. This is the reason why. He hath given up into 
the hand of the enemy, the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord as in the day of a solemn feast. So that's why you have the imposters in the land today in Jerusalem thinking, and we, our people believe that they are really the Jews. But this says very clear in Lamentations 2 verse 7. You're talking about laments and this is Lamentations. Lamentations 2 and 7. The Lord had cast off his altar. He cast off his people that used to keep the sanctuary, but he cast us off. He had abhorred his sanctuary. He hated that place because the, and I'll show you the scripture, and I'm bringing that in now. He hated that place because of the Gentiles over there in the land. Abhorred his sanctuary. He had given up into the hand of the enemy, the wall. So he gave the enemy that land. Look at it. The walls of her palaces, they had made a noise in the house of the Lord. That's what they're doing. They're just making noise over there. They're not following the Most High's word. House of the Lord, as in the day of a solemn feast. As in the day of a solemn feast. So they're acting like they are the people. They're acting like they're following the commandments in the holy days. That's why it says the house uh, have made a noise in the house of the Lord as in the day of solemn feast. As in like they're actually dealing with it. No. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to Matt, uh, Luke chapter 20, Luke chapter 2. Let me add this in real quick. Luke chapter 2. Excuse me, not Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 21, I believe. Give me a minute here. I'm going to start at the 22nd verse. Luke chapter 21, verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance. Matter of fact, let me start at the... I'm going to start at the 19th verse. In your patience possess ye your souls, and we ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies. Okay? When you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies... Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So that's what it's talking about. I'm going to go back. I'm going to hold, hold Luke chapter 21. I'm going to go back there. Let's go to Lamentations 2 verse 7 again. The Lord hath cast off his altar. You see how the Bible just connects? He hath abhorred his sanctuary. Hated it. He don't like it no more. His sanctuary. He hath given up into the hand of the enemy the wall of her places. Excuse me. Palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord. It's talking about war people noise it's not no it's not order there it's not civil it's not civilized noise there that's what it's talking about in the house of the lord as in the day of a solemn feast so they act like they are the people they act like they're keeping up the commandments they deal with the the kabbalah and the talmud i'm gonna do i'm gonna show you verse 20 again in luke chapter 21 verse 20 and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, mind you, we're in the New Testament, armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. That's that noise. That's why it's lamentations. You're lamenting. Desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Those of our people, we fled into the Atlas Mountain in Africa. That's why we think we're African-American. We are able to hide against, just like Moses was able to hide uh, over there with the Egyptians. Just like Christ himself fleed into Egypt in the northern parts of Africa. Is it sinking in? So that's why the Most High told us to go into the Atlas Mountains, flee into the mountains. You flee out of Judea into the mountains. That's the same thing Christ did. And Moses, they went towards, not, of course, in that area in in that particular time but we always were able to flee in and and, and kind of like we we resemble africans but they don't like you how many african people know you know today to act like they cool with you come on now their spirit is totally different so they don't like you then let them which are in judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and that and let not them that are in the countries enter ye into. For these be the days of vengeance. You see that vengeance? 
that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be a great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. It's talking about our people that stayed in that actual land. All right, you can read in the Josephus about the war of the Jews in regards to when we built a trench around Masada. They built a trench and we was up high and they just, they actually allowed, they caused us to, uh, we, they starved us out. And it goes into some very <laughs> touchy details. Verse 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, talking about us, and shall be led away captive into all nations. Now hold up. This is in the New Testament. We're going to be led away into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. That's who are in the land today, people. And until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So when you look, when you look at Lamentations chapter 2, verse 7, the Lord have cast off his altar. Remember, this leads you to Luke chapter 21, and it goes into that information. He hath abhorred his sanctuary. He had given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They had made a noise in the house of the Lord. That's that noise you hear over there, all that war and mess, okay, of the Lord, as in the day of a solemn feast. So they're acting like they're, act they're dealing with the commandments, but they're not. Don't believe that, okay? Now, the reason why I say that the Most High don't love everybody because you don't love everybody. You shouldn't even love yourself if you are an evil person, period. This is not to say you want to kill yourself, no. But if you, if you can accept that you are a sinner and you think that's okay, then there's a spirit involved. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to Psalms chapter 19, verse 163. Psalm chapter 119, verses 163, and it says, I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. All right, let's go to Romans 12, verse 9. Romans 12 and 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Hate or abhor that which is evil. Sin is evil, right? Cleave. To that which is good. And when it says good, don't think it's just talking about something that you feel is good. Because we don't know what's good. It's talking about the law. It's talking about the keeping the commandments. That's the only way you're going to be considered good. It says cleave to that which is good. It's actually talking about, it's not talking about a person. It's, it's talking about like a thing or a place. It's talking about the commandments. Like the oracles of the Most High. And another thing, too, once you start following the template, scripture by scripture, verse by verse, eventually people is going to start hating you, which you know you're doing something right because you're coming against their actions. So they're going to come against you. They're, not, they're going to be wondering why they don't like you. Like, something about him I just don't like because maybe I'm not doing the same things you're doing and maybe you feel, oh, you think you're better than me and all that mess. Well, they're not seeing the fruits of you. They're seeing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They're coming against the Most High, just like they came against Christ. Let's go to Amos chapter 5, verse 10. Okay? Amos 5 and 10, and it says, They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. They hate those who come against through the gates, like, you know, how our people be caught up in jail and all that, and we come and they give us the Bible and we start to minister. But, of course, that's just on a surface level. But it's actually talking about even, you know, the disciples, they were thrown in jail and, you know, when Christ was put up on a cross, you know, he was always preaching. Okay? They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they hate or abhor him that speaketh uprightly. You see that? So you understand you're doing something correctly when somebody always got to come against you with something. Let's go to Galatians 4, verse 16. And I'm going to end it here. Galatians 4, verse 16, it says, I... Excuse me, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? This is what Paul was saying at the church of Galatia. 
because they were doing everything. It was, you know, all out of order. And he was telling them certain things, and he became their enemy. And this is the reason why Paul was, was killed, especially when he went back to Rome. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Just because I'm telling you based on scripture that the Most High don't love everybody. If you are sinning on purpose and you think it's okay without repentance and you die in your sins, the Most High hates you. Period. Because he allowed you to die in that predicament. One more scripture, and I said that was the last one, but this just came to mind. Okay? Romans. That's another thing. We think we are the last scripture. We think we you know the, when certain scriptures pop up in your head, you got to get it out. That's another thing, too. Romans 8. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. For to be a person that that is dealing with your human emotions is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity, which means it's hatred against God. Carnal mind started when Adam and Eve blew it in the garden. Everything went downhill for man. So you are nothing but dust. But there's a particular spirit that the Most High allowed, as you would say, you have a key holder within you. That's why when you look at the word Peter in the Hebrew, you'll see, or matrix, you will see Petra or Peter. And he told Peter, he was like, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So is that clear? Whatever you bind in heaven shall be bound on earth. And you see, so he gave him a, a particular type of powers and he gave all his people that, that want to follow Christ. The key is the Holy Spirit. It's like opening up, re, being reborn again, opening up the matrix like a wound. That's why they come up with all these movies, the matrix and all that. When they showed Neil, when he was, if you scramble the word Neo, it means one. He was the one that was had to be reborn again. And when they showed the first one, when he was he was unplugged and he came out and he saw all the fields of people and babies that were in this machine world. People are in the machine world now. It's no difference. When you unplug, though, then you see the world as it really is. Destruction. The sky has been scorched. Those are your chemtrails. Smoke all over the place. Come on now. <laughs> They're telling you. But I, I'm not going to even try to turn it into that. But it says, uh, verse 5, for they that are for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, verse 6, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law. You see where it says law? So you know if you love the most high, the law will be in your mind. You want to. So how do I do it? People think they know. You don't know. You asking a pastor preacher that don't know who he is. He up there black as ever. He don't know what seed or what tribe. He don't even know who he is. A lot of our people mean well, but they don't. he don't know who he is. You're going to have to find some. You're going to ask, ask the most high. The same way I did it, okay, I'm just giving me an example. I asked a few people, now what does scripture mean? What does this mean? Why am I all over the place? You say this and he say that and, you know, we're tossed to and fro. That's what Satan wants. That's what he do. You ask the Most High, what's the correct way to worship you? And then he'll give you everything. It will blow your mind. That's what you, that's what you want. That's what he wants us to do. Because you have to be, re, you have to be reborn. All the mess that they taught us is, is lies. It's straight lies. You talk to a regular person that's shouting all up in the church, hey, what does this mean? What does scripture mean? With it? I don't know. I have to ask the pastor. No, ask the most high. All right. 
But we waking up. All right. Let's go to uh, verse eight. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the most high. If you're in the flesh, you can't please the most high because the most high set laws and commandments. People try to say that the law is done away with. But how can that be when everything is set with laws today? It's OK for you to do 55 on, in traffic and you believe you break that law. You are sinning. <laughs> but yet when, you, when it comes to scripture, Oh, God love everybody. He has grace on us so we can do what we want and we fall, but we get up. He understand that we human. No, he understand that you're human. If you better come away from that human nature or you're going to be death. Because he hated you. That's why you scramble that word. You'll see the word death. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh. So it's saying, but we are not. In the flesh, but in the spirit. You see, it's always dealing with the spirit, the spirit, because the spirit is the only thing that you have left in you that have the essence of the most high in you. Everything else has been defiled. So once you try to connect back to your inner man, you, you'll hear certain things because that's the connection, like an Internet connection. Like you got Wi-Fi or whatever. The farther, the further away you are from the router. <laughs> the less connection you get. So sometimes you get a signal, sometimes you don't. But the closer you are, the more signal you get. And that's when you get full understanding. Things move slow for you. You're trying to figure out this scripture. You're trying to figure that out. Because you're not as connected to the most high as you want to be. But you, if, you stay, if you stay within your spirit man to try to figure out the most high, then he'll give you more information. That's how it go. All right. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. You see what it says? Dwell in you. OK, because you got demon possession, but people don't really deal with spiritual, holy, holy possession, which is the Holy Spirit. Right. Dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The spirit of Christ. What is the spirit of Christ? I'm going to show you. And then I'm done. I'm going to show you the spirit of Christ. Give me a minute. I'm just adding the scripture. If I can find it. I got like two or three Bibles here. And some of this text are different from others. And I get used to a particular Bible. All right, first John chapter 2. First John chapter five, verse three. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Huh? That, there you go right there. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Which means it's not hard. And I say that in a lot of videos. All right. So there you go. Um, I'll be making more videos, of course. Um, I am off to um, Feast of Unleavened Bread with some brothers. Uh, hopefully you all have a great Sabbath. You know, of course, everybody do their Passover on different days, but we got it in anyway, as long as we do it during the time that it's supposed to be done or close to it. So there you have it. The most high understand, um, that we have, a, that we are people that were cast away and, you know, we're learning. So there you have it. Um, this is my life and I'll be doing this for the rest of it. Shalom.